Hello my friends, my name's LazyJet and today we have, for the first time ever on this channel and in Train Simulator, we have a LazyJet Train Sim Studio. And to start off with this brand new series I'm hosting on this channel, I want to start with this, the Class 373, but obviously we know it as the Eurostar, because I want to talk about it. So as we all know that the Eurostar is the fastest train in Train Simulator. Or is it? So what I'm driving right now is probably one of the fastest high-speed electric trains I've ever driven in this game. The Class 373 has a top speed of 300 kilometers per hour. I mean, you don't need an expert to tell you how fast that really is. And the thing is, you can't just put it in full throttle and just let the train go. You need to have a checklist. How long is the straight? Is the track smooth enough? Is there any bumps? Is there any uphills? Is there any downhills? Is there any sharp turns? You need to have a checklist for all of those things before you can really open this train up. And that's why I like the Eurostar. It's gorgeous to look at, it's ridiculously fast, and it, it's got some amazing sound effects. And when I said about it's got a top speed of 300 kilometers per hour, I kind of lied. Because we are doing 360 kilometers per hour, but that's because we're on a very long bit of straight. I'm, I'm, I'm taking a gamble here because I could have the risk of derailing this thing. But look at this now, 370 kilometers per hour. Uh, we're coming up to a very sharp corner, apply the brakes. But I think the Eurostar is probably one of the best trains in the world. And for a train that was made in the 90s, it looks like it was made, well, yesterday. That's why I like the Eurostar. I probably like the Eurostar more than the Class 390 Pendolino. And that is saying something. But what a train this is. It's, it's so nice to look at. Especially like when you're from the distance as well. I mean... You can't falter a Eurostar. It's one of the best trains I've ever driven in this game. But I am not just going to sit here and just tell you guys how much I love the Eurostar. Because the Japanese believe they have a train that's faster than a Eurostar. And that's what I'm here to find out. We need to go to Japan. That is right, my friends, the Japanese bullet train. Finally in Train Simulator. And I have to point out, I know nothing about Japanese bullet trains except they're really fast and they're never late. And even if bullet trains were late, they're only up to like a minute. But here in the UK, when a normal train is late, it's like up to 10 minutes to an hour. That's, that's ridiculous. And the interior is also a magnificent place to be. I mean, look, this is like, it looks like a first class airliner. That's, it's, I mean, it's beautiful the way that the Japanese have their trains. Well, it's, it's the Japanese. They know how to do a good job. But even though the Japanese bullet train looks insane from the outside, but in the inside, it looks very simple. You have your reverser, your throttle, and the brake. That's all you need in a train, nothing else, no complicated high-tech stuff because the Eurostar, I have to admit, it's very complicated to actually get moving. But for this, all you have to do is turn a key, pull a switch and go forward and you're off. That's, that's how simple, this. you can't get any more simple than that. And there's a very special feature with this bullet train because if you actually look closely, it looks like it's got no wheels. But it has, because the wheels are actually under here. What they've done is to make the train more aerodynamic as possible, they actually have covered up the wheels, so it looks like the train 
doesn't have any. It looks like it's just hovering. Like, that is how spectacular this train really is. It's, it's kind of frightening in a way. Now, because the shape of the nose is so pointy and long and streamlined, it makes it fast. Really, really fast. Oh my god, this is really fast guys. Now when I was driving the Eurostar, I was doing about 370 kilometers per hour. But I'm only limited to 320 kilometers per hour in the bullet train. But I know for a fact it can go faster because the automatic brake system is pulling the train back. It's not letting me go at full speed. So top speed of this, I don't have a clue. And the cool thing is about the bullet train is that we're not actually touching dry soil. We're actually on a floating bridge, which means there's no hazards of people walking on the tracks or any level crossings or, or anything. No hills. It's just flat. I just wish I can open this train up and see how fast it can really go, but... There's a speed limit and I have to follow the speed limit. But it, that's okay because I have a plan. Because in a few moments, we're going to have a race of the Eurostar versus the Japanese bullet train. Oh yes, it's happening. The bullet train has travelled far and now it's here on English soil, or train simulator soil, and it is ready to face its competitor, the Eurostar. But I have to be honest, I am a bit nervous because I really want the Eurostar to be faster, because I love the Eurostar, but I just, I just have this like little sense that it, it won't be faster than the Japanese bullet train. So we're going to find out. And not only that, but I'm actually going to be keeping a record now of how fast these trains actually go. So from now on, every single race I do is going to be at 110% power. And there's a dog barking outside. So yes, and from now on, we're going to be programming every single train race I do will be at 110% power. And not only that, we're going to be keeping a record with this. This is the uh, race time lap thingy that I'm hosting now. So every time we do a train race, I'm actually to be keeping a record of how fast it actually does go through the, you know, racetrack thingy. So I'm gonna be keeping a record of how fast they really go. It's kinda of like a leaderboard. Whoever has the fastest time is the is the is the winner. You got you guys get the idea. So now that we have the racetrack, we have the trains, there's only one thing left to do and that means hand it over to our tame programmer. And the programmer is this mysterious person who we never see, we don't know who he is, but all we do know is he is the one that makes these trains race against each other. Some say that he has his very own top hat. All we know is, he's the programmer. And they're off, and you have to remember, this is a high-speed electric train race, which means anything can happen. And looking at the train so far, the Japanese bullet train is pulling away a lot more faster than the Eurostar. Coming up to the first corner with tremendous speed, the Japanese bullet train, it does look like a rocket ship. It looks like a weird airliner, but just without its wings, but the Eurostar is still falling behind and it's not going as fast as the Japanese bullet train. Top speed of this is only 300 kilometers per hour, but I've proven that on Tracer Blazer that it's a lie. Over to the helicopter that the Eurostar is not doing as well as we thought, but if we go up ahead we can just see the Japanese bullet train that's far, far ahead and it's leaving the Eurostar for the dust. I don't know why I said for the dust there, but never mind. The Japanese bullet train has got some serious speed. <laughs> it does look like a rocket ship, doesn't it? Just, it's even got like little tail fins on the roof. 
But the yellow star is still not letting it go away that easy. It's only a few meters behind the Japanese bullet train. It does look good, I have to say, having these two massive titans racing against each other. And it's it's quite a close race. At this precise moment, it's anyone's game, I say. Uh, but the yellow star is, is not far behind, but it's slightly catching up. It, it's a few hundred meters behind. I cannot believe how close this race really is. Coming onto the long bridge of doom. They could just see the Euro star falling behind just a little bit. But the Japanese bullet train is still in the lead and it's started to slightly slow down as it's coming around to the second to last corner. And the Euro star is almost catched up. <laughs> look, look, look at the speed of this thing. It's, oh, it's, it's, almost, it's almost there. The Japanese bullet train starting to apply its brakes while the Euro star has got much more stronger brakes than the Japanese bullet train. But that means it can... Uh, break later but I have to remember the Eurostar is pulling a lot more coaches than the Japanese bullet train probably uh, twice as more in fact but it's still quite a close race the Eurostar and the Japanese bullet train it's it's really close we have to, I, remember my friends it's the first train to stop those are the rules this is such a close race I've got to say but the Japanese are starting to slow down the bullet train is slowing down but it's so weird to see a train without its wheels it's it's freakishly incredible but almost there at the end of the line come on euro star you're almost there but it's so cool to see a japanese train and a european train on the same line this is what we do on the lazy Jet youtube channel we see which one is the best but it, the euro star slightly to catch it up but i don't think it has enough to actually beat the bullet train almost at the end of the buffers Oh, th this is such a close race. Remember, my friends, the first train to stop is a class as the winner. And it is a very close one between the Eurostar and the Japanese bullet train. Who, which one's going to win? I think the Japanese bullet train is the first to stop. Oh, st very squeaky brakes. And in second place is the Eurostar. Now, that is a shocker. So there we go, the Eurostar that we thought was the fastest train in Train Simulator was actually beaten by a Japanese bullet train. So there we go. So even though the Japanese bullet train was faster than the Eurostar, I still prefer the Eurostar because in my opinion, it, it just looks better. And it's 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 also a real shame of what's happened to the Eurostars now because most of them obviously have been scrapped. Well, I think all of them have been scrapped, I think. I'm not a massive expert on these sort of things. But now it is time to see the race times or the lap times. I'm not sure what to call it. But basically, uh, it's a timer to say how fast these trains went round uh, my racetrack. Uh, so we call them uh, race times to see how fast they went. Um, so, the Japanese bullet train, the time that it went, it, it took, sorry, to go around the entire racetrack, uh, it did it in five minutes. 28.10. That is... That is pretty quick in my standards. That's ridiculously quick. And for the Eurostar, the time it took the Eurostar to go around the entire racetrack, it did it in 5 minutes. 38.4. That's, but, but that's basically a 10 second difference, which is actually really good from a European train and a Japanese train. That's... That's actually really close. But what have we learned from this video? Well, we have learned that a different train is faster than the Eurostar. Which, to be honest, I've really thought the Eurostar was the fastest train in Train Simulator. But, you know, I have been wrong many times. And it's one of those um, very recent um, moments where I'm wrong again. It's it's a very rare moment where I actually get anything right. So it's quite common for me to actually uh, get things wrong. It's a lazy jet tradition, tra 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 tradition, tradition on this channel. Shut up, Oliver. But I'm sorry, I have to say I still prefer the Eurostar because when I look at the Japanese bullet train, it's 
it, I mean, it's cool, but it's it's like a, an iPhone or a laptop. It it I don't bond with that locomotive or well, train, I should say. But with the Eurostar, it's like a it's like a it's like a pal to you, in my opinion. Even though it's ridiculously hard to drive, uh, it's got no uh, passenger interior. Uh, the actual cab detail is slightly lacking, but. I still like the Eurostar. It, 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 I, I bonded it more. I bond with it more, I should say. I bonded with the Eurostar more than the Japanese bullet train. And on that note, unfortunately, it is time to end this video. I hope you guys did enjoy it. If you guys have any ideas and you want to see two trains go head-to-head -head with each other, leave your idea in the comment section down below. I'll be sure to read it because I do enjoy reading you guys' comments and your fantastic ideas. But a big thank you to all my pretend audience for coming out to the railway studio and seeing these two titans go head to head with each other and a big thank you for watching this amazing video make sure you click that subscribe button follow me on twitter and instagram all my social media nonsense is in the description below thank you so much for watching have a good day and i'll see you guys again next time bye for now things sort of